Here's our exercise file for this chapter. It's exercise14.vwx. And uh, before we do anything else and look at the different mapping types, we will adjust the OpenGL rendering settings to make sure we can see textures. Let's go to View, Rendering, OpenGL Options. We will be rendering in OpenGL. And here are the settings that uh, will yield some pretty good results. The detail is high, but if you have a slower machine or an older machine, you may want to have the detail medium for a little bit speedier operation sometimes. And then just make sure that all these different items are selected, as shown, and click OK. So for the first mapping type, let's take a look at plane. We'll go to the saved view by the same name, plane. So basically this is a left isometric view. And now let's render in OpenGL. And if we select the object and look at the object info palette, you will notice that by default, in this case, the map type is plane. This is a drop-down box for the map type, and the map type is the first one, which is plane. And what this mapping type does is it applies the texture to one plane of an object. So in this particular case, it's this plane you can see here on the lower right side, and also this face. They're both parallel, and the texture is applied correctly in this plane, but if you look at the other ones, it appears as if the texture is basically extruded through the material. You can see that in the hole here in the middle and on the sides. So that's a simple mapping type, and we can go to a slightly more sophisticated one, or a one that adjusts better to the object, which is the next one, and that is auto-align plane. And right away you can see that textures now are appearing more or less properly on different other planes of the object. And this is one of the mapping types that are suitable for objects that have large rectangular shapes. Now there are different adjustments that can be made to move the texture on the surface of the object, and we'll take a look at that in a future chapter. Let's take a look at another mapping type, which is perimeter. Perimeter works very nicely when you have complexly shaped objects where you want to wrap the texture around the perimeter of the object and less concerned with the top and bottom but it's the perimeter that counts. So let's take a look at the saved view with that name, perimeter. Here we have just such an object. Let's click on it and render it in OpenGL. And if we look a little more closely here, let's take a look at the object info palette. You can see that, for this file at least, the default for this view is auto-aligned plane and the texture doesn't wrap very well, doesn't space the blocks very well around the perimeter, in this case this surface, of the object. But when we change the map type to perimeter, then it works much better. So the point here is that even though you can play with different mapping types for unusually shaped objects, when you want to make sure that the perimeter surface of the object has the texture properly applied, always try the perimeter map type first. You can play with some of the other ones. Here is a plane, and it looks generally OK, except for the way that the texture meets here, for example, along this edge on the left. And then when you click perimeter, you can see that it's fixed and properly spaced. Now let's take a look at the next mapping type, which is Cylinder. And just as the name suggests, the Cylinder mapping type is suitable for cylindrically shaped objects. So we'll go to the saved view with that name, Cylinder. Here we have a Cylinder. And uh, let's render it in OpenGL. In this case, we're using a brick texture. And if we select the object, you can see in the Object Info palette, that the map type is auto-aligned plane. And if you look closely, you can see how the texture doesn't quite line up well as it wraps around the perimeter of the cylinder. The better mapping type for a cylindrical object is, no surprise, cylinder. And you can see now that it maps very nicely as, as it goes around. The seams work very nicely. And you can see that using the cylinder map type, works very nicely on the surface of a cylindrically shaped object, much better than some of the other mapping types, such as perimeter, for example, that may look similar, but in reality have some areas here where the, where the tile doesn't wrap properly around the perimeter. 
If we go back to Cylinder, you can see how nicely it works. The next mapping type we'd like to look at is Sphere. And once again, we will render this in OpenGL. And, in this, and let's select one of these objects. And in this case, you can see that the map type by default is plane. But if you go to the map type called Sphere, then it does a much better job of wrapping the texture on top of the sphere. In this particular exercise, we have both a sphere and a hemisphere object. So we can apply the same mapping type to the hemisphere object. And you can see that it does the same thing. It works much better. If we try a couple of other mapping types for this, for example, cylinder, that doesn't quite work as nicely. You see it stretches the texture over a portion of the, of the hemisphere. And if we go to auto-align plane, then it really bears no similarity to what would be expected for a hemispherical object. So really, for these kinds of round or hemispherical or semi-hemispherical objects, the best mapping type is sphere. Now there's one more mapping type that doesn't normally show up when you click on this drop-down box, and that is a mapping type that applies to roofs. And it only shows up when you have a roof in the scene and it, and it is selected. So let's go to the roof saved view. Here we have a roof or a roof object, and let's render it in OpenGL. It's a little bit easier to see. And with this one, applying the texture to a roof object using the roof mapping type is just slightly more elaborate a, a process, but not, not particularly difficult. So let's select the roof object. Here's the Object Info Palette. The Render tab is selected. And under Mode, or next to Mode, the drop-down box, we can select By Object. And then we get a number of different options here. One of them is the Part drop-down box. In this case, we would like to apply a texture to the top surface of the roof object. So we can click on the Part drop-down box and select Top. Now we still haven't selected a texture, we just told the program where we want the texture to go. And then if we look at the texture drop-down box here where it says None, we select Texture. And in this particular case we already had the shingles texture in the file and it applied them automatically to the roof object. 